Hi there. Welcome to Naples United Church of Christ. I am Reverend Angela Wells Bean, our church's minister for congregational care, and I am thrilled that you have chosen to join us for worship today. I'd invite you to participate in our service by writing in the chat. Tell us where you are or how you're doing so that we can be in conversation with you. If you want to know more about everything going on in the life of our congregation, I'd ask you to watch the service through our church website. And while you're there, you can sign up for a free account and we'll keep you on the loop on everything that's coming up from worship to programs to our incredible music ministry. If there's anything that's happened in the life of our church that you missed, or maybe you want to watch it again, go over to our church's YouTube page where a lot of our programs are archived. You might be surprised as to what you're interested in. I want to take a moment to thank everyone who contributes to Naples United Church of Christ. It is because of your generosity that we are able to offer so many of our programs online and with such high quality. So if you contribute or you have in the past, thank you so much. And if you'd like to donate to our congregation, you can click on the link that's in the chat or you can go over to our church website and donate. It's really easy. As your minister for congregational care, I am here to offer pastoral support to everyone in our church, and that includes you. So if you'd like to be in conversation with me, please send an email or call the church office, and I look forward to getting to know you better. Thank you again for joining us, and now let us center our hearts and minds as we prepare for worship. love to meet you after worship. Also, next week is a joining Sunday. So those of you who have been considering becoming a member of the church, you can do so next week on Palm Sunday. So that'll be a really exciting day to join the church. And if you are interested in joining, please get in touch with Chelsea very quickly this week so she can work with you on the paperwork and that sort of thing. We do want to remind everybody that we have associate membership available. So if you're a seasonal resident and you hold your membership in a church up north, we would never ask you to make a choice or to consider resigning your membership somewhere else to become a member here. We are supportive of all faith communities that you are a part of. And so if you want to continue to be an active member of a church up north and be a member here when you're here in Naples, you can certainly do that. And associate members have all the rights and privileges of full membership. So that option stands. Now we'd like to ask you to register your attendance with us. So if you're here in the sanctuary, please take those blue attendance pads. It should be on the edge of your pew and fill it out and give your neighbor a smile as you pass it along to them. 
And if you're joining us remotely, please write your name in the comments section and tell us where you're worshiping from this morning. And while you're there, you can click on a link if you'd like to, which will pull up a PDF of our bulletin. And a couple of events happening in the life of the church this week that I wanted to bring to folks' attention. On Tuesday night, we'll be hosting a Tuesday at Twilight uh, music performance, and it is going to be fabulous. We have a violinist coming from the Philharmonic, Dr. Sasha, our pianist, will be part. Uh, Be sure to take a look at that in your bulletins. That's this coming Tuesday, March the 19th. And on Wednesday of this week at noon, our Lenten meditation worship services will continue. Here in the sanctuary, I will be sharing a message on the topic of sacrifice and friendship. And uh, Pam Jimenez, who sings in our choir, will be uh, the soloist. And Dr. Becky will also uh, be sharing music on Wednesday. Should be a wonderful midweek uh, worship service. That's this coming Wednesday at noon here in the sanctuary. And then some exciting news about something that's happening this week. Over the past six months or so, we've had a group here at the church that has been working on a new website, and our new website will be migrating to our web address. Our web address will remain the same, but the new website will launch uh, this week. Uh, Be sure to take a look at it. It's a a wonderful product that so many here at the church, uh, both uh, parishioners as well as staff, have worked uh, so hard on, and I think you will really enjoy it and especially those who are not yet part of our church family uh, will see all of uh, the wonderful care and mission that you all as a congregation are doing here uh, in ministry. If you have user questions about our new website, uh, Yuli Mercado, who is our communication specialist uh, on staff, can answer any questions you might have. You'll note as well that we're still building out our website beyond the initial 15, 20 pages of the site. So sort of like a new shoe. It takes a while to break it in. Uh, So let's be sure to uh, take a look at the website this week as uh, it's going to be wonderful. Might be down a few days this week, uh, but we'll have it up and going uh, prior to Holy Week. Just a couple more things to bring to your attention. A quick reminder about the Easter flower offering. If you are interested in making a contribution to the offering, please grab a form. They look like this. They're in the narthex. Grab a form on your way out and fill it out. They are due to the church office by next Sunday, March 24th. Um, The Easter flower offering serves many different purposes. Your contribution will help beautify the chancel on Easter morning, which is wonderful. Help by... uh, purchase flowers to make our space look wonderful on that uh, celebration day. And also the funds that we raise in excess of the cost of flowers will go to refugee relief in Southwest Florida. That's an ongoing uh, mission of our Board of Missions and Outreach. And so the rest of the flower offering will go to helping the Ukrainian family that we've been supporting for a little while. And the dedications for the flowers will be in the bulletin on Easter Sunday. So that's why we need those forms back by next week. Um, Two things going on this week that we want to bring to your attention. The Baby Boomer Dinner is tomorrow night. This was an event that occurred regularly before COVID and then was put on hiatus for a little bit. And now, bless them, the Marinis, Bob and Deb, have brought it back. They are hosting the first, uh, the first gathering tomorrow night at their home, and it's a potluck. So if you want to come and enjoy baby boomer music <laughs> um, and delicious food and dancing, <laughs> sorry, um, do that. It's tomorrow night. You can read about details in your bulletin. Um, And the other thing I want to bring to your attention is on Thursday night, it's the Wise for Mental Health Dinner. I announced it last week, but again, just a quick reminder, it's Thursday night at 5.30. It's going to be a training offered by the David Lawrence Center all about mental health and how we can um, be aware of our own mental health and get the support we need and also be a source of support for our loved ones. So please come to that if you're available. It's going to be a really educational evening. The dinner's free. Just come, but please sign up because we would like a head count so we can prepare the food. And now we have a wonderful mission moment this morning. 
Many of you are familiar with our church's bargain box, our thrift store, which is so important because the money we raise goes to our Board of Missions and Outreach and supports their grant-making program. This morning, we're going to hear from a nonprofit here in Collier County named Fostering Success, and they were one of our grant recipients in 2023. And so we're going to learn more about the important work that they do. And also, uh, the executive director, Anne, and her staff person, Nicole, will be in the gallery gathering place after worship if you want to learn more or learn how you can get involved in all that fostering success does. Please see them after worship in the gathering place. But for now, I'd like to invite up Anne to tell us about fostering success. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so fostering success, we've been around for 25 years, believe it or not. And we help foster children throughout Collier County. On any given day, there are 300 foster children in Collier County alone. They're removed from their homes due to their parents' abuse, neglect, or addiction, with addiction being the number one reason right now. Um, and once they're removed from the Department of Children and Family, they're placed in a home either with a relative, a grandparent, parent, aunt, uncle, or a family friend, or they're in a foster home or a group home. And after they're placed, that's when we go in and provide services. We're a true nonprofit organization and receive no government funding. So we want to see how we can help the children right away. There's a only 50% graduation rate from high school nationally for children who are in foster care, and only 4% graduate college. 20% end up homeless. Um, or deceased, sadly. So we really see that we want to help the kids. And when they're removed from their homes and there's a case that opens in the court, a case might close after 18 months, right? They might get reunified um, with their parents or they get adopted. We still stay in the child's lives all the way through 23 now so that they have a foundation and they have a support system. So the first thing we do is when they're removed is we want to provide emergency supplies for them, three days of clothing and equipment. They may need cribs, they may need beds, they may need um, car seats. This is a very popular one for babies as well so that they can get safely transported. And then we go and help with them with the fun, right? So they've just received a traumatic experience and we want to make sure that they can get their childhood back. So we provide free summer camps, winter camp, after school activities, if they want to play baseball, softball, volleyball, whatever they want to do to get their childhood back, we pay for that 100%. They want to do music, art, dance, theater, we're going to make that happen as well. So we know that we can break the trajectory of their lives by providing education. And what we end up doing is between zero and five for the youngest children, we connect them with quality early learning centers, daycare centers throughout Collier County based on where they live and work. Once they are in elementary school, we provide free tutoring to the kids and we have a mentor that goes with them regardless of where they are. So if they live in Immokalee or if they live in East Naples, the tutor is actually in their schools providing free tutoring all the way through college if they need that as well. Um, and one of the things I'm proud to say is that because we stay in their lives after the case closes, we have a 100% high school graduation rate for the kids who are in our program. And that is because of your support. Your support has helped us provide, I believe it was 500 hours of free tutoring to the children who are in our program, which makes a tremendous difference in their lives. It gives them encouragement. They have a foundation. They have somebody who believes in them and follows them all along. We also have a scholarship program so that um, children can attend any two-year, four-year, or technical school in the country. Uh, which is amazing because you don't have to go to a four-year school, right? You can go to Lorenzo Walker. We have kids who are in their culinary program right now. Gave uh, one of the girls a knife set, $750. It's not a ton of money, but it's a ton of money, and it's a life-changing experience for her. She was able to get the knives, which you need for the culinary program, and now she just graduated, and she's working in one of the hotels down here. So she's giving back. She's successful. She's happy. She's living on her own. So this is just a short little example of how we're really making a difference in their lives. And the last program we're offering now 
is a thriving aftercare program and it's for the kids who are aging out of foster care because when you're 18, adulting is hard nowadays. And to know how, what's a FICO score? How do you pay bills? Why is it important to have a good interest rates out there? How do you get a job? How do you um, build your resume? So we have a mentor that goes with them and provides support. And they also work with one another um, on cooking classes and how do you change your lives? So it's a foundation for these kids all the way through. And it's why we have these success rates. So. I would just like to thank you all for donating through the bargain box because that is what has made a difference in the community and for our foster children down here. So thank you very much. I appreciate it.
our church has a longstanding relationship with an international mission partner named People for Guatemala. We were able to take many trips there prior to the pandemic, and then we took another group down in November of 2022, and we had a whole trip planned for a group to go in November of 2023, but that trip was postponed because of civil unrest in Guatemala. But the good news is that it's been rescheduled, and we've got a group of 10 travelers from our church who are going down on April 1st, and so we have the privilege of blessing them this morning. And I want to thank all of you who in the fall donated prescription pill bottles and cotton fabric. We have those in storage and they will be taking those with them um, for Ken and Lois Werner, the founders of People for Guatemala, will be able to use those. And we have an ongoing toothbrush collection you may have read about in the bulletin or seen the toothbrushes in the narthex. We are still collecting those because the toothbrushes are desperately needed, of course, to help with dental hygiene in Guatemala. So we'll be collecting Collecting them for the next few weeks. Please bring those if you're able. And now I'd like to invite our travelers to come forward so that we can bless you. Come on up and bring your bulletins with you. You can stand in a, in a row here between Mark and I. So we're going, I'd like to invite all of you to turn to your bulletins. We're going to join in a responsive blessing together. There's a role f- uh, for Mark and myself and the travelers. And then towards the end, Mark is going to invite the whole congregation to participate. Two disciples walked the road from Emmaus, from Jerusalem to Emmaus. They did not notice the length of the journey because they were talking and discussing the events of the past days seeing Jesus suffer and watching the community struggle. A stranger joins the journey, listens to the stories, and gives them a new way to perceive their lives, the world, and how their faith plays a role in all of this. As the disciples offer hospitality to the stranger and they sit together for a meal, the stranger blesses the food and gives it back to them. In this act of blessed sharing, of receiving and giving, the disciples recognize the risen Christ in their midst. We come together today to pour our blessings upon these folks who are traveling to work alongside our mission partner, People for Guatemala. They have been preparing to go on a mission trip to the city of Antigua to provide support to those living in the surrounding villages. Travelers, will you carry out this ministry with humility and grace, being attentive to the needs of the local community? If so, please say, yes, we will with the help of God. And to all in the congregation, do you accept these people as servants chosen to extend our Christian love and concern to our siblings in Guatemala? Yes, we do. This trip is co-led by Hank Temple and Bill Durrell, and so we are grateful for you being co-leaders and for all of you for going to Guatemala on behalf of Naples United Church of Christ.
please be seated. And I invite you to turn to your bulletins and join me in our prayer of invocation. Let us pray together. God of endless blessings, thank you for the blessings in our lives, including the community we're worshiping with this morning. Come to us and tune our eyes to see your blessings, our ears to hear them, and our lips to sing your praises. Amen. If you're connecting with us online this morning, I'd invite you to reach out to someone with whom you may be worshiping. And if you are also connecting with us online and would like to send a text to a friend or an extended family member as a way to bless them, uh, what a blessing uh, that will surely be. And if you're present here in person, let's stand and pass the peace of Christ to our church family.
invite you to be in a spirit of prayer with me as I offer this morning's pastoral prayer. Almighty God, on this St. Patrick's Day, we come to you in prayer to be reminded that not all good fortunes are due to luck. Your ways are mysterious. You do things we cannot fathom nor explain, things which seem too good to be true. And if any human mortal did them, they would be. But help us to remember, O God, that nothing is too good to be true for you. When we are suffering, we often come to you in prayer, pleading for help or for a different outcome, and we thank you for being there in our time of need. When we are angry, we are quick to blame you, wondering where you are in the mess. When all is going well, we confess that sometimes we neglect to turn to you in prayer. We give ourselves the credit or chalk up our fortune to good luck. We ask for the faith to lift up prayers of gratitude as easily as we lift up prayers of petition. Thank you for being there even when we forget to take your hand. Thank you for bestowing blessings upon us even when we forget to give you credit. And thank you for turning your attention to us when we ask for your help. We are thankful for all the ways you're at work in the world, and we ask you to continue to work through the hearts and minds of the diplomats and peacemakers who are trying to bring peace to Israel and Gaza. Pour your wisdom upon them so the violence can finally end. We ask you to be with all the healthcare workers, the CNAs and nurses and doctors, all those who pour countless hours into helping keep our bodies and minds healthy. For their expertise, O God, we give you thanks. We thank you for nature, for birds, for beautiful beaches, for sunrises and sunsets, for our loved ones, and for all the sources of joy in our lives. Thank you for these beautiful lives that we have the privilege of living. May we not take one day for granted, knowing that this life is precious, and we are not lucky, but we are abundantly blessed. We give you all glory, laud, and honor, O God, as we lift up the prayer that your Son, Jesus, taught us, praying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is just one verse. It's from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, excuse me, chapter 11, verse 5. And so I invite you to hear these sacred words. As you do not know the path of the wind or how the body is formed in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. Some years ago, I officiated a wedding ceremony. Bride asked Grandpa to be the scripture reader. But prior to reading scripture, Grandpa told everyone at the ceremony how bride and groom met. Years prior, the bride, a young woman, uh, fell victim to some very serious food poisoning. And her friends actually had to call an ambulance to bring her to the hospital. In walked a paramedic who put her on a stretcher and hoisted her into the ambulance. And it just so happened that two years later, paramedic ended up being groom, husband. At which point, Grandpa looked at the bride and said, Melissa, believe it was more than just luck. 
That's when Grandpa read the scripture that Pastor Angela read for us just a few moments ago. As you do not know the path of the wind or how a baby is formed inside a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the ways of God always, the maker of all things. When something happens in our lives that is fortuitous, do we attribute it to just luck? Or is there something more going on? Maybe blessing. It appears that this is an appropriate day to ask that question, for here we are gathered and on St. Patrick's Day, which this year lands on a Sunday. And when it comes to the legend of St. Patrick, luck versus blessing, a story often gets told in about an event that happened early on in his life. At the age of 16, St. Patrick was, uh, fr frankly, uh, kidnapped by Irish pirates. And he was brought from Great Britain over to Ireland, where he served almost as a slave, if you will. And during times of, of having to, to, to be alone and during times when it was very, very hard and enduring uh, outdoor weather, uh, he turned, like many of us do, to our faith. And according to St. Patrick, he had a vision from God that there would be a boat that would show up on the coast of Ireland to return him to Great Britain. Catholic scholars disagree on how it actually happened, but St. Patrick got on the boat. Some scholars say that the captain changed his mind at the last second and allowed St. Patrick to get on the boat. Others say that there was a passenger on the boat that dropped off of the trip at the last second, affording the opportunity for St. Patrick to get on. But the future, you might say, is history. The St. Patrick boards the boat, he goes back to Great Britain, he obtains some theological education, and he goes on to be an extraordinary missionary, not just in Ireland, but all over Great Britain. Was that boat scenario, was it just luck, or was it something more? My sense is that when we are wise enough to attribute the work of God that we cannot explain or even understand, the work of God that is mysterious in our life, to more than just luck, a bit of hope and a bit of strength comes our way. But it's hard to do, is it not? For I would imagine that if you're anything like me, you're a rather cerebral person. And these two images that Solomon gives us from this line of wisdom in the book of Ecclesiastes are both way out of our control. You don't know the path of the wind? Perhaps some foreshadowing to the Holy Spirit in the New Testament as the Spirit is described as wind in Acts chapter 2? Nor do you know how a baby is formed in the mother's womb. Perhaps some foreshadowing to the virgin birth of Christ that is described in the gospel. These are two images that are out of our control and they're beyond often how we comprehend what it is that we can make happen. And it is not easy to accommodate mystery. And it is certainly not easy to do that in a society that dismisses anything that's mysterious. For example, we have caller ID. We know the gender of babies before they are ever born. We know who wins an election via exit poll before the election's even over. We watch television shows where magicians reveal the secrets that they've always kept hidden. As one Bible commentator put it in relationship to Ecclesiastes 11.5, we live in a culture that destroys wonder and then we ache for it. But what if? What if there's a little bit more than just luck going on in our lives? Some weeks ago, I read a really interesting article about some of the worries and anxieties that Americans are having over the presidential election that's upcoming in November. And the worries were all about uh, the humanity that is the office of the president.
And in this article, the word of encouragement that was offered up to the reader was completely out of the box, incredibly unusual, and spoke about the providence of God that may extend beyond the office of the president in order for this country to have been what it was and to be what it is. And the author of the article simply mentioned what he referred to as a God incidence a coincidence that may have come from God. He said, when you think about it, one of the things that's really interesting about the history of our first four presidents is that three of them actually passed away on the 4th of July. Adams, Jefferson, and Monroe. Very, very interesting. And if that is, in fact, the case, and there's only a 1 in 365 chance of that occurring, What if there's more than just the office of the president at work? What if God can move in ways that are divinely mysterious? What if there's more than just luck? There's a wonderful scholar, a Yale scholar by the name of Michael Medved, who argued something similar in a book entitled uh, The American Miracle, Divine Providence in the Republic. And in this book, he shares back the history of who we are as Congregationalists. We're a UCC church. And he was talking in one of the chapters of his book about the Mayflower and the pilgrims who were on the Mayflower. And he said, when you think about where it was that they wanted to land, what was in their control as it related uh, to their journey... If they had actually landed where they wanted to go, there was a lot of wind, violent seas, uh, all kinds of of, uh, mysterious uh, things happening, Uh, they would have passed away maybe in a matter of months thanks to the temperature and the location where they were headed. But because they landed 250 miles away, there were some fortuitous events that happened that enabled them to actually survive and, yes, to go on and establish a congregational church. Medved's really wise one-liner was, they were blown blessedly off course. (laughs) You can't control the path of the wind. Perhaps a rather wise bit of wisdom for all of us who are cerebral, who want to control things, who want to make it work because of what it is that we do. No, we don't leave our brain at the door of the church, but we balance that which is religiously understood by accommodating that which we cannot understand. I mean, what if we are more than just lucky? I bet you could share back with me over the course of your lifetime one or two God incidences that happened to you. I'll share one with all of you, a God incidence that I will not soon forget. Once upon a time, I recall being in the E-terminal of the Charlotte Douglas Airport. This is the regional jet terminal. And if you've ever been in that terminal, you know that it is a cruel form of torture. My plane had been canceled, my flight was canceled, and I had to try to get on another flight, didn't get on the first one, didn't get on the second one, and I was really wanting to get on the final flight of the night because I was headed to go and visit my grandmother who was ill. And there my name was on the screen, M. Williams, and I was number eight. They called one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the last passenger to board the plane was number eight. It was me. Plane landed, I got out of the plane, and I rolled my suitcase into the hospital where she was and was able to visit with her. Then I took a taxi back to the hotel room, and do you know that four hours later, she passed away? And I was the last family member to visit with her alive. And I got to thinking, was I just lucky in that moment, or was there something more. When the paramedic ends up becoming your husband, what you say is maybe, just maybe, there's some strength and hope for the marriage. When a boat shows up on the coast of Ireland, you go forth and you decide to be a missionary. 
when something happens that there's only one out of 365 uh, chances that it might happen, instead of just dismissing it, you say, well, what if there's something to come out of all of that? When something happens and you get blown blessedly off course, you don't just dismiss it as something that was just mysterious and unknown, but you say, let's go establish a church. When you're number eight and you're the last person to get on the plane, you use it as hope and strength as you navigate your grief. I mean, it is impossible to know the path of the wind or how a baby is born in a mother's womb. For God's ways are beyond comprehension. And when God orchestrates something glorious, how important it is for each of us to consider that it may be more, you know, more than just luck.
glorious and majestic God, for the ways in which you work that are made known to us, we are grateful, and for your unknown ways, we are grateful as well. I thank you for the gifts that your people have brought before you today, and I ask, O oh God, that you would receive them into your loving arms, using them in and through the power of your Holy Spirit to build up this, your body of Christ, the church, so that we might be light and hope. Amen. And now as you go from this place, may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warmly on your face. May the rain fall softly on your fields. And until we all meet again, may the Lord Jesus Christ hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. Go in peace. Sure.